COVID-19 patients who are refusing to self-isolate or use state quarantine facilities are proving to be a problem for government. That's according to Deputy Health Minister Joe Paitla, who was speaking to the National Council of Provinces on Tuesday. He said that most of the patients refusing to self-isolate were from the Western Cape. Well, let's check in with the Western Cape's MEC, Noma French Mbombo. She's, of course, the MEC for Health. Good evening and thank you so much uh, for your time, Dr. Mbombo. Firstly, take us through what the Deputy Health Minister was saying. How impacted has your province been by this problem? Uh, thank you, Cathy. I think it's about, because you remember he was here, I think two weeks ago, uh, it's about the issue where you find that the, the beds that have been activated for the isolation uh, have been underutilized in terms of uh, full capacity. And uh, the Western Cape government, uh, they've done uh, in terms of their effort to mobilize people to, for the uptake of the isolation and quarantine sites. Uh, we haven't even activated actually others because we did a prediction of about 10,000 beds that could be utilized if you are using the current uh, national model. And uh, currently, the ones that have been activated is about 1,200. And they find that it's very rare that you get it, those 1,200 into full capacity. Now, the question is, yes, they, they, what, what is the reason for that? People provide um, as many reasons. Also, you need to understand that uh, specifically in the city of Cape Town, but it's different actually outside the city of Cape Town. Um, people are coming there for jobs or for the education, and therefore they're not necessarily there with their own uh, families, some of them. Uh, you don't have that luxury to have the extended family where you, people could guarantee to be able to look after your belongings. People will worry about what about, gonna, I mean, what about the burglary or the theft. So there are many of those who must never dismiss their truth. Uh, so what is it that you could be able to ensure that people do the uptake? Uh, we've done ma various interventions, for example, where you make use of the people who have been uh, gone to quarantine isolation to be the champion so that they could be, share, uh, be able to share their uh, positive experiences. Uh, we call them individually, uh, each and every substructure in the metro, there are eight sub-districts in the metro, uh, where it is, there's a dedicated number and staff who call each. And thirdly, make use of the community health workers so that there was some of the people, especially those in the vulnerable communities or those who have got core um, existing uh, medical conditions, morbidities, uh, because they are part of the people who take their treatment and we deliver the treatment to them, where they could be able to go door to door, house to house, and ensure that they mobilize for the people for the uptake of these sites, especially in the hotspot where you'll find that it's impossible, irrespective that one person can say that, no, I could be able to self-isolate or self-quarantine. But in the high-density areas, um, in the areas where you'll find that, like in an informal settlement, even if you will say that you could self-isolate, but there'll be a time where we have to share um, the bathroom or the, um, or the tap uh, with the others. One of the issues that the minister also raised is the fact that those who don't want to self-isolate also include doctors um, who are waiting for their results, or not just doctors, but health workers, rather, uh, who are waiting for their results. How big a problem is it with the, the health officials? Um, no, with, with, remember, uh, there has been previously, there's been a backlog uh, in regard to the results for, for, for the testing, which now at the national level, national lab, they've corrected that. And uh, I think one waits about 72 hours or so now, especially for those uh, like the health workers that you have mentioned, and also for those uh, who are patients. So uh, we do have a process where they could get their results in. But also take note, uh, especially coming from the constitutional court, uh, um, where you find that it was indicated that actually people could be, you, you cannot just force people uh, for isolation and quarantine. Uh, it's a case by case. And also that where you find that the, the public is most uh, affected, uh, you could be able to use a court order to force that person. But again, it must be case by case. And then we have to... Uh, assess in terms of that that person is it possible to isolate or not. 
how much of this refusal to go to uh, these quarantine sites has to do with the state of the quarantine sites themselves? Because we did have that no, court no, case that, um, that, that resulted in this ruling that you're talking about. Yes, yes. No, our, our sites uh, currently in the Western Cape are using mostly the hospitality industry, so it's mostly the hotels. Um, the one that is not a hotel or is in the hospitality is the uh, is in Pinelands, the old mutual building uh, that were provided by the old mutual 300 beds. But also the uh, the conditions there, there are a high standard where people could be able to make use of. But I, I need to to indicate that. Just like in the wards, in some areas, you won't be able to have um, that opportunity to be all by yourself. It's only mostly in the hotels where you can be all by yourself, your own room and everything, because you are using the, the existing hotels. But you will get sites like in the old mutual where you could be in the eight bed, just like in the wards. Uh, so people need to understand that, but we do not mix the isolation and those who are quarantined. Because remember, with those who are quarantined, they not necessarily are positive. But those who are on isolation are the ones that are positive cases. Dr. Mbombo, despite the efforts and the uh, interventions that have been made, uh, the number of COVID-19 infections in the Western Cape are still very much on the increase. Where do you think you're not getting it right? What is the biggest hindrance here? everywhere inside by the national uh, modeling and epidemiological modeling. And actually in the Western Cape, you'll find that actually they are not growing as fast as it used to be, including even with the deaths. But we cannot get excited about those because we do know that because of the stringent approaches in terms of the testing, many people don't get tested because we have to focus on the vulnerable groups, the health workers and all of those. But you have to try and relate and look in terms of which other uh, are ways where you can be able to determine whether we are off the peak or we're still going to the peak. So in terms of the hospitalization, whilst it might we have seen some of the decrease, but for example, over this weekend, there's been quite a large amount of the increase, especially in our field hospital. Therefore, it's too early to determine whether we are, um, uh, at least maybe we are at uh, the peak we have reached or not. But in terms of the modeling, it did show that uh, it's going to be early, I mean, late June and early July uh, for Western Cape and then other provinces is around about August, September. Do you so have enough money? Specific. Do you have enough money to keep uh, implementing your strat strategies? Uh, money, um, uh, I'm, I'm glad that the, uh, the, the National Minister of Finance um, has done the zero budgeting, but I, although I saw that there's, a, uh, there's nothing much coming to the provinces. No, we don't have much money. That's why when the president came in, uh, we did make a, a, a submission in terms of that the money that we need, not only for the health, uh, for the education, and also for the Department of Public Works in regard to the quarantine and isolation sites. But within our budget from the provincial treasury, one has to roll call and pay for loan, if I might say so, in regard to, uh, especially in regard to appointing the health workers. We've made a call for about 5,000 plus of health workers, of which is from our own budget, we could be able to appoint, have appointed about 1,500 or so. Of course, we don't have to appoint others. We need to have um, some of the other ways to get that money.